Good freaking morning, my beautiful friends and family. Today, we're getting the Evoy back on the road. Once and for all, this motor's never coming back out. We ain't got much to do, man. The motor, the trans, the T-case, the subframe, all that stuff is back in the car. Not really torqued down or anything, but it's, it's in the car, so we need to do, and the turbo kit's already on, stuff like that. We need to do the wiring, the intake manifold, intercooler piping, some fluids, do some, of course, brand new motor braking things, and hopefully hit the road. I'm getting a fairly early start today, so I think we should have ample amount of time. There is a bunch of parts at the dealer as well that I may try to run into later. My goal is to take, take the Evo into the dealer and pick up the parts. But I gotta be there before they close then, of course. Let's start this morning with a pull for the boys in this glorious STI. The very first thing that we need to do is get this intake manifold coated. So I had to strip the coating off of this thing and make a few repairs and I need to go ahead and get it repowder coated. So let's make some space in the shop. I gotta get the Type R out of here. Last thing I want is the Type R full of powder coat, of course. I mean, it does blow off, but I might as well keep the car somewhat clean. Who's ready for a cold start for the boys? Small oven should be plenty big for the intake manifold. Now I am not going to be sandblasting this guy. It was previously sandblasted and cleaned out. So thankfully when you use the powder coat stripper, it just brings it back down to a sandblasted profile. So technically we don't even need to sandblast it. Now I do think where the Magnus is gonna go, being that we have the laser engraver here for all the print shop stuff, we I have the ability to laser etch or engrave the powder. The Magnus is gonna sit right up here somewhere and I wanna give it a, a really nice, maybe even somewhat of a polished look for when we etch the powder off. It's a very clean Magnus logo. Let's slap on a 800 grit disc and see how that looks. I don't want it fully polished and if it was fully polished, I don't think the powder coat would stick as good as it needs to. I have the intake manifold finished down to a 1000 grit where the etching or the lasering is gonna be done, fully masked and plugged off. This guy is ready for the oven. Let's get our powder coated, boys. Nice little pre-bake cycle and we can get her coated. Spraying something a little bit different today. This is black satin texture from Prismatic Powders. It's gonna be fairly similar to their splatter black, but just a little less splattery, I guess you could say. Really excited to see this thing all finished up. Fully coated up. Here's how funny it looks before the powder cures in the oven. So this goes 350 degrees for, what was it, 10 minutes? Now while the manifold's in the oven, I'm gonna go through and start busting out some stuff on the car. Torque down things, paint mark things. There's not much we can do up top until that manifold is done. It is much easier to get our axles in with the lower control arm disconnected. You see how this whole thing just swings right out of the way. Short axle is the driver's side, long one is the passenger side. All right, I got a ton of goodies installed underneath. Very last thing to install is this downpipe. And then we can move on up top. We're almost done, man. I am moving today. Also helps I've done it a million times. Now I did opt to replace the oil cooler. Is either replace it or just delete it. 
and I figured let's replace it. So we have the STM kit on there and it uses the B and M super cooler, super cooler mini or something along those lines. This little guy here. Thankfully and surprisingly, the oil cooler is only held on with one bolt to the chassis. I thought about beefing up the STM bracket a bit, but it seems to hold fine, so there's no need. New oil cooler is on. Now, these little AN adapter fittings that go in the oil filter housing, it seemed like they were leaking a tiny bit, and they are the, uh, what would you call these? ORB style. I'm gonna try something a little bit different. If it doesn't work, not a big deal. Here's what we're gonna try. I'm gonna take this split O-ring off, and we're gonna try using one of these guys. I forget exactly what they're called. Evo 10s use them factory, but it's like a crush washer with the, with the built-in seal, and that should work. Manifold is out of the oven, fully powder-coated and lasered. Look at how crispy and perfect that laser engraving turned out. Very, very pleased with this new color of powder on the manifold. I think, it, I think it's gonna look a little bit cleaner than what we had on here previously. I need to go ahead and get the bungs on, get the throttle body on, get the throttle cable attached, and we can get her on the car. So this thing has, I guess you could say, the hidden throttle cable. I opted to put the mounts for the throttle cable on the bottom of the manifold so that it's kinda hidden out of the way. Meaning, you need to install cable before manifold goes onto the motor. Not a big deal at all. So this engine bay is nearly complete, minus the radiator and the intake. You guys already know the drill. We're gonna top it off with our fluids, our engine oil. We gotta put the transmission gear oil in, some power steering fluid, well, ATF for the power steering fluid. And then we're gonna go ahead, hop in the car, crank this thing over until it builds oil pressure. I'll then put some new plugs in it. Gotta gap the plugs, get the plugs, coils on, and go ahead and hit the first start. Oil of choice, 2050 Valvoline VR1. I've gone through a couple different oils in my life with these, I just missed, with these kind of builds. And VR1 is just so nice because you can get it locally at O'Reilly's. Other oils are good as well, but you can, if you can't get them locally, it's kind of a pain. Gotta order a bunch at once. Gear oil only had 100, 200 miles maybe. So that is getting reused. Funny enough, this is the third time I'm reusing this gear oil. Remember when I pulled the trans because I thought the rear main was leaking and it wasn't? We reused it then too. It is time. Let's go ahead and crank it over. Make sure everything sounds healthy. Crank it until we see at least some oil pressure. It is a brand new oil pump, and as you guys saw if you watched the engine build video, I did pull apart the oil pump and pack it full of assembly lube. So that should help speed up the process of getting this thing to build some freaking oil pressure. I remember last time, a couple weeks ago, maybe a month ago with a brand new motor, it took for a while, it took a while to, to build oil pressure and it's scaring me, but whatever. I'm just, let's build oil pressure. Let's quit talking. This will also give us the opportunity to make sure everything sounds healthy. All right, let the fuel pump run for a sec. Let's make sure we build fuel pressure. You know, I could probably just turn off the fuel pumps for now. All right, fuse 15 is pulled out and that will allow this thing to crank without the fuel pump coming on. First crank, let's see how it sounds. Sounds healthy. There we go, we're building pressure. All right, we got 10 PSI of oil pressure. That's ample, I like that. Do a quick visual inspection. Make sure I don't see anything leaking oil. Watch the head gasket leak again, ha ha ha. All right guys, should we fire it up or what? Let's get some plugs in it. Got our new NGK plugs gapped down to a 018 is what I went with. A little bit tighter than some people run, but I run more boost than most people run. Plugs are in, coils are on. Let's hop inside 
and we need to make some adjustments on the Haltec ECU, being that we have a different trigger system now. So thankfully Kigley gives you this nice little diagram, exactly what you need to do on a Haltec with their trigger system. All adjustments in the Haltec have been made. Let's go ahead and toss back in our fuel pump fuse, fuse 15, and see about that first start. Now of course I don't have the radiator or coolant in it, so I'm not gonna run it long, but I'll run it for a momentary moment and go from there. Come on, girl. She should have definitely fired by now. I'm guessing and assuming it's something to do with the trigger settings. I may have to tweak with it some more. After making one slight adjustment in the trigger settings, we now have cranking RPM before we did not, so it should start. Well, it fired. It was just revving really high, so I killed it. All right, we're gonna need to do some map adjustments. It's revving way too high. There's quite a bit of changes we made, yeah. I don't love how high it's revving, but hey, it started. So far, everything seems kosher, and she is not throwing any check engine lights. Nice. All right, let's go ahead and get a radiator on this car. The old radiator we had, kind of a piece of crap. You remember how the brackets were always sitting sideways. So I decided to order up a tried and true Koyo radiator for the car. Koyo is the best. Should have got one of these from the start. And the cool thing about the Koyo radiator is it's a four through six radiator, meaning we can run the nicer setup hose, but it's modified. Apparently it's modified to fit the Evo 8 fan. And yes it is, wow. It's amazing what a nice product is like. New radiators in, and look at that. Our brackets actually fit like they should. Amazing. So it's about an hour later. Made a bunch of adjustments in the map, and now old girl fires up and idles. Not at 4,000 RPM. This thing sounds so freaking good with these new cams. Let's hit it that low. Good old Brian Crower Stage 3s, 276s. Motor sounds healthy as could be. Unfortunately, we have one problem, and one problem only, as to why we are not driving this thing home. All is good, but this. You see that oil leak? Yeah, that's a, that's a nice oil leak right there, my friends. That needs to be taken care of before we do anything. So much so that I need to stop running it before I, until I can take care of that oil leak. Now, thankfully, it looks like it's gonna be a very, very easy fix. Oh yeah. It is coming from the AEM oil pressure sender that is screwed into the factory location. Very simple fix. It just needs to severely cool down before I want to cram my hands back there. Not enough to lose oil pressure, but too much to drive, clearly. And after even further diagnosing, it is not coming from 
what I expected. You see that down the intake manifold? Intake manifold's gotta come back off. Funny enough, there is a plug underneath the intake manifold. I didn't catch it. Of course, you would think that the head shop would have put all the plugs in. They put nine out of 10 plugs in, but they forgot the one that's hard to get to. So the intake manifold's gotta come back off and then this thing can drive. We gotta let it cool down and it's currently 9.22 p.m. Oops, not the new phone. So that is gonna have to wait till tomorrow.